Hi guys, this video is going to be all about the Matsutake mushroom. Um, a good friend of mine who I worked with in Seattle 12 years ago actually sent me this. Uh, he received a ton of these guys and he decided to share it with me. So uh, Lee, thank you so much. Uh, really appreciate the gift. And I think on this video, it's not all going to be shot today. I think we're going to probably process these. Um, and then over the next few days, as I experiment with it, we'll just record little s snippets each time, uh, kind of give you an idea of what we're working with. Matsutake, usually uh, harvested in the fall, is very important for a lot of Asian cultures. It kind of symbolizes fall, um, sometimes referred to as pine mushrooms because they tend to grow uh, underneath pine trees and the pricing is just depends on what the harvest is like uh, it can be quite expensive and before we kind of get back to here i'm just going to start a dashi really quickly so dashi super easy to make it's just a couple of things uh kelp or seaweed but make sure it's the hard seaweed not the sushi seaweed and then bonito which is a dried uh, smoked fish flake, essentially. Some people compare it to like bacon flavor, if you will. So I have here a little bit of uh, filtered water. We're gonna get it on a medium low heat. And so there are a couple of thoughts on kelp. Um, you can see there are some white powder on here. So sometimes you'll wipe them down, um, but I would say only wipe it down if it looks like it's actually dirty. Uh, the white powder is basically natural MSG, so we want as much as that as possible. If I see anything like foreign object that's on here, I'll pick it off. But other than that, we're good. If you clean it too much, you just get rid of all the good stuff. So nothing crazy, we'll go in with like this size for maybe a quart of water. So back to these guys. Um, you can see kind of some differences. This guy, you can't really see the gills versus this one you can on the right. So uh, the younger they are, you can't see the gills. And as they mature, the caps will open up. And so there are a few thoughts on how to clean these. Uh, the most common is to take a slightly damp kitchen towel. Um, you can use paper, but it just tends to tear and just kind of brush off all the dirt. They usually advise against rinsing it too much because they do have a tendency to get waterlogged. Um, if you have any spots that you're having a lot of trouble with, you can also take a knife. Just gently scrape off anything that you don't like. Okay, so I can smell the seaweed. I think it's extracted enough. I'm going to take this guy out. And we're going to bring the heat up to medium high. I'm going to add a good handful of the needle flakes. So just a good size. And so now we're just kind of waiting. We're going to wait for there um, to be a little bit of simmering, turn it off. We're going to wait 15 minutes uh, just to let it steep. And then we're going to strain it. And that'll be our first dashi. And we can actually take the kelp and the bonito that we strained out, put it with another quart of water, 
and that one will actually bring up to a simmer and boil for about half an hour. And that's going to be our second dashi. So two, da two dashis for two different purposes. One's going to be a little more pure and one's going to be a stronger flavor. And getting some bubbles. So here we're turning it off. I'm going to set a timer. And we're going to let that steep. So the first dashi is going to be a little cleaner in flavor. Uh, that one's, since we're going to go longer to extract whatever flavor is remaining, it's going to be darker, uh, perfectly fine for miso soup or any kind of broth. Uh, this one is going to be, again, just slightly pure. We're going to season it a little bit with some soy, not too much, a little sake. and some salt. We're going to bring this to a quick simmer, give it a taste, uh, and then this is going to be our first test. So we're going to pour just this broth over the mushrooms and kind of get that really, really pure flavor and see what we're working with. I've seen it locally. It's usually one of those things that I see and it's like, okay, I'll try it one day. We actually tried it once. I found an Asian supermarket that sold it in really small packaging. Um, I was very excited. I, I just wanted to try it. This was maybe a year ago. So we only tried it with one thing and that was over steamed rice. So again, it was like a dashi based uh, liquid rice, mushroom, and when we um, cooked it, opened the lid, you're supposed to get the aroma and everything, and we tried it, and honestly, it was, it was a little underwhelming. I don't know, it just wasn't, wasn't what we were expecting it to be, and Diane will be the first to tell you that that's kind of been the way most expensive ingredients have been for her, whether it's uh, caviar or fresh truffles, it always, all these expensive things don't really wow her. She always tries it and it's like, oh, that's it. So this is the Japanese tasting method. They have their own, like, each person has their own little bowl. And so instead of 50 tasting spoons, you have your spoon that you, your ladle or your spoon, and then your own individual bowl that you keep around you and just taste it each time. All right. I actually like that system a little more. So here are the mushrooms. So this will be our first test. Can you describe the aroma of the broth? Um, so the dashi is smoky more than anything. That's from the Bonito Flakes. As far as this goes, can definitely smell the mushrooms. So the mushrooms uh, have a very woodsy smell. They're often described as spicy. And we will see today if that is true for us. So just gently poaching it and we're going to see what kind of flavor that yields. So it's very squeaky. So far still kind of not a strong opinion on this mushroom. Um, Diane, would you like to try? Okay, so <laughs> apparently I thought I was recording, but I wasn't. Diane tried it. Um, she said it, it's kind of brie-like. It's got a funk to it. 
it's as if you went camping and you foraged for mushrooms and they didn't kill you. And that's kind of the taste that you would get. And I, I would agree. Uh, we're going to go ahead, go into our next test. So I kind of want to try it torched. And we're going to do this as sushi. So I'm just going to... It was just lightly oiled with canola oil. Any kind of neutral flavor oil would achieve. You can see it's exuding a lot of liquid quite watery. I guess I'll try it first. I like it this way. Squeaky, still get a little bit of flavor. I think it goes better with it. Um, the flavor of the mushroom gets lost. A little bit. It just it tastes even, roasted. I like this application better. It's because it tastes like sushi. Mm -hmm. Right? So you get the vinegar, you get the rice, you get the wasabi. The actual mushroom gets lost, I think. True. Tasty though. Okay, so now we're going to try um, sauteing it in a few different fats. So we're going to start with butter. This one. I've seen on sites saying it doesn't pair well. So we'll see if that's true. Try and get a, another flavor going. This is going to be garlic oil. I think I'll sear all of these. We'll get them all on the plate and then we'll taste it together. I'm not going for too brown on any of these. So I feel like then we all we taste is the roasted flavor. So just lightly browned on all of these. What are you cooking on a Saturday night? Oh, you know, just some matsutake mushrooms and <laughs> some foie frat, fat, no big deal. <laughs> okay, so we have four different ones here. Um, I guess I'll just go around. Okay, that was butter. You know, I don't think it clashes per se, but garlic oil, I think it works better. Hmm. Beef fat. So far the winner. Can't really tell it's flaw on the last one. Hmm. Tastes like swimming pool. That's a weird observation. That was the beef fat. Really? Uh huh. Tastes like swimming pool. Okay. Hmm. That's butter. Mm. Okay, that's interesting and weird. 
The butter com complements the mushroom way more than the pizza. It's weird because online places have said it clashes. Mm. The garlic oil. Complements it really well. Mm -hmm. But it kind of takes away from the flavor of the matsutake. So it's a good flavor, but you're eating more, what is it, garlic oil? Mm hmm Surprisingly, it comes off more watery, mm -hmm. tasting with the wok wrap fat than with the butter. Hmm. You get a slight flavor of liver, but honestly, the flavor doesn't carry through the way that the butter does. So I would say my top two favorites were the butter and the scallion oil. But if you were to ask me which oil highlighted the flavor of the mushroom the best, I would say. All right, I think this next dish that we're going to try, it's going to be kind of like a bruschetta, but with Chinese steamed wheat bun. So this you can just find at the Chinese market. I'm just going to cut a couple of slices here. And we're going to toast it up. Just medium heat, want to let it take maybe five minutes, kind of a slow toast so it gets nice and crispy. And I think today we're going to try something a little different. We're going to probably cook it gently, but also use a little bit of uh, olive oil. We didn't try that yesterday. So the idea today is uh, kind of we're playing off that idea that it tastes kind of like brie flavor wise, but it's more squeaky. So I'm going to use some avocado for that texture, that fatty texture. And we're going to add a little bit of fig butter or fig jam. Um, I'm thinking maybe some uh, shaved prosciutto on top or Actually, we have Iberico ham, so very similar, prosciutto or serrano or Iberico. Avocado. As a toast, we're going to have to consider what shape we want the mushrooms to be in that if we have just like this, it's pretty tough actually. So if we take a bite, we're probably just going to get the whole mushroom out. Um, so we'll probably do some kind of, I guess, a, either a dice, I think a dice makes sense, or we'd have to score it very heavily so that when you bite, you're able to actually bite through the mushroom. So, I mean, we can try both, so. This might be enough. So we'll try one. You know, this kind of whole mushroom is very pretty aesthetically. For this other one, we'll do more of a dice. And 
that looks like a pretty good amount. I'm going to take a look at our bread. So, okay, it's warm, but we're going to just keep going. Again, we're going to take our time a little so that we get nice and crispy on the outside. Just a little bit of canola oil. And I think like yesterday, um, perhaps we're going to sear it more gently. So it's not going to be a hard sear. Because I think when we seared it really hard, like we did for the sushi, uh, it just kind of tasted like the sear flavor, which is really nice, but it doesn't highlight the mushroom itself. All right, so got our toasted manto. Go on with a little bit of fig. Do avocado next. Okay, and I got the mushroom on paper towel because it's uh, quite watery. I think it needs a little black pepper. Maybe a touch more olive oil. And Iberico ham. Right, moment of truth. I'll try it first and then you can try it. Usually have slightly better responses. I'm gonna try, see if I can split this guy with just by biting. I think it works. I like it a lot, but you're much better at articulating what you're tasting. So I think I'll go straight for this one, right? Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like dog food. Maybe it's the Iberico. It's the Iberico. Mm. I think it's quite complex. I think the mushroom flavor comes through just enough where it really does kind of have a brie effect. I kind of got lost for me. Let me try out this one. The fig is such a strong flavor. Mm hmm. I'm gonna eat this whole piece. Sure. Hmm. I feel like the fig needs to be with the mushroom. Hmm. That needs to go together because if they're separated, it kind of gets lost. Hmm. Maybe. So between the two, I actually prefer the big piece. Mm hmm. Even though the small piece is easier to eat. Maybe have some sort of intermediary where you have like small, perfect bite sizes that aren't this small. Mm -hmm. And that way you can get more of the mushroom with it. Maybe even just thicker slices too mm -hmm. to go with it. And maybe a little bit less avocado so that you focus more on the mushroom. Overall, the flavor is very good. Makes sense. Yeah. All right. So we're going to test a little bit again. So this is more diced up. Got it with a little olive oil, salt, and pepper. And my spoon that we used to get that fig butter. And I'm just going to introduce that to here. So that we're glazing it with this, essentially.
we're just going to let this reduce down so that it starts to glaze more. It's getting pretty close. This wasn't necessarily designed to go with the manto. We we're just heating up the leftovers. So. Probably go, go well on top of some rice. Yeah. Almost looks like Kung Pao chicken or something. It's good. I think it could actually have used even more fig. That's what I was thinking. Like at this point, it's really nice. It's subtle. You wouldn't be able to tell. Mm. Yeah, when it was on the, the toast, it really tasted like a raisin jam, kind of overpowered. Mm. Mm. This really highlights the flavor mm -hmm. of the matsutake really well. Yeah, and I think like maybe it could use a little more, but also it's kind of nice that you can't quite tell that it's fig jam. Oh my god, it's so hot. But whose idea was it to glaze the mushrooms with the fig jam? Um, yours. Oh, so hot. <laughs> it's really good. Okay, till the next test. Mm. So our last, again. our last test for the matsutake is gonna be on a pizza. It's gonna be two ways. One is gonna be thicker pieces that get cooked, and the other is gonna be thin slices that go on top. Pizza number two. All right, so we're wrapping up the Matsutake mushroom video. Uh, talk me through some things that you learned after cooking the mushroom several ways. Um, yeah, I think, well, first of all, it's a week or more since the last application we did. Um, just haven't had time to film this last segment to finish the video, but I think basically it's a it's a unique mushroom. The smell is very different from a lot of other mushrooms. I think cooking wise, it's a very watery mushroom. So I don't know that either of us really enjoyed it as much just simply poached where you're enjoying it and in its like most natural form. I think searing helps. But I think over searing, browning heavily uh, changes the flavor too much so that it's just like any other brown mushroom, which is to say it's delicious, but why would you brown such an expensive mushroom to make it taste like every other mushroom? Um, I think it, it, it shines the most when you lightly sear it. Um, and again, your, your choice of fat or oil is very important. So. You know, I think olive oil and maybe a lightly scented garlic oil were my two favorites. Um, the animal fats just kind of really overpower it, power it. Um, I think personally, because I like the flavor of beef fat, I liked the beef fat application, but it didn't, you can't really taste the mushroom itself. Um, for whatever reason, it tasted like swimming water or dish water <laughs> or whatever to you. So. Tastes like the swimming pool. Yeah, that's weird. <laughs> I stand behind it. <laughs> so, and then it was amazing on the pizza. Um, so that one was, um, that's a really like in a high heat oven, um, very quick cooking. I think it does really well as well. Um, we never got to try it with rice actually. Yeah, but we did try it a long time ago and it was not too memorable. So if someone is curious whether you feel like matsutake mushrooms are worth it, what would your answer be? I mean, I think it is like any other luxury ingredient like caviar and truffles and foie gras, and that's just personal taste. If it's, there, there are two factors here. One is do you genuinely enjoy the flavor? And if you do, then, you know, the price is just, can you afford it? Do you think it's worth, um, 
what you're paying for it. And the other is if you consider yourself a foodie or just someone very interested in food and you've never had it, then I think you should try it. I think if you can afford it, um, it's why I constantly try new ingredients when I have the chance to, even though um, it, it's a splurge. Um, but just out of natural curiosity as a chef, I want to see what it tastes like. And it's not so much just to see if it's, if it's worth the hype. It's just genuinely, well, where does this ingredient stand um, in comparison to all the other ingredients? And to me, that's very interesting. If you had to describe the mushroom in three words, what would it be? Uh, squeaky, funky, watery. <laughs> that doesn't really shout out, ooh, this is delicious and <laughs> worth it. Um, it's a unique mushroom. Um, it's pretty sure it's cheaper than uh, truffles. I mean, we've had, we haven't had the greatest luck with truffles. Uh, granted, we're just getting it from HEB, from the local supermarket. They, they have it a couple of times a year. Uh, so it's probably not the, the best truffles out there, but um, they're real truffles. And I don't know, it just hasn't really wowed us yet. Anything else you want to add? Um, no, I don't want this video. I've edited all the first part. It's already <laughs> quite a long video. So hopefully this ending segment's not too long.